one thing I'd like to explore a little bit. You, earlier on, we talked a little bit about the future and the changing of how appraising might be done with inspecting and data collection from, from other sources. So one of the things I like to think about is, is what if the scenario were to play out that the inspection or the data collection was entirely separated from appraising? Uh, d- does that work? Does that create problems? Can that happen to where we have an entirely separated uh, appraisal and data collection effort? Yes, it, it can. And yes, there are potential problems. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I, I was chair of the Real Property Valuation Committee with the National Association of Realtors. And, and NAR was establishing some third pro, uh, third par, party uh, property delay, uh, collection guidelines. Obviously, the concern that we have is the reliability of the data that's being obtained from that third party. So the thing that we were looking at is, does that person who's collecting the data have a stake in the outcome of the appraisal or not? You know, at one point, there was possibility of using real estate agents to do that. Not necessarily a problem unless that agent is the listing agent or the selling agent uh, of, of that transaction. Uh, we've, we've heard stories, anecdotal stories, I suppose, of Uber drivers, you know, being engaged to go collect information for a property. And, and based on the scope of work, maybe that's okay. But the reality is that uh, we need to make sure that uh, the data collection process doesn't get compromised in, in, in so that the results of the appraisals are, are suspect as well. And, and with some of the new data tools that are out there, it is entirely conceivable that uh, a third party could go and get that data and get you just about, maybe, maybe better, but, but at least as good as the information that you could get yourself uh, I personally have a 360 degree camera and, and it, it, you can walk in and do a 360 degree video. I know that a couple of AMCs have developed some remarkable tools for both collecting, getting a virtual tour. If there's odd odors, there's little notations made. If there's issues that uh, they note that may not be readily apparent in the video, it's able to be noted. And as long as the person who's collecting that information is doing an objective process, then I think absolutely you can get some really good, reliable data. That And, and, and the, the benefit might be that uh, it, it may help get rid of some of the allegations of bias. If, if the person who was out collecting the information at the property not the same person who is performing the analy- uh, the analysis. It, it makes a, it, it puts a firewall there that might make it a little harder for some of these claims of bias. And I know that there's a certain degree of concern from the GSEs that uh, there's confirmation bias with, you know, maybe sympathies with the appraiser who hears the sad tale of someone who's got difficult uh, circumstances. And if I can just get this value to this number, it'll solve all of my problems. And, and that kind of goes away if, if uh, the appraiser who is performing the appraisal is not the same person who collected the data. It certainly can, cr- can create the uh, lessen the opportunity for that to happen for sure. You know, another thought, Craig, I know I hear is that if we're leveraging these type of um, appraisals where the data collection, the inspection is done by others, it also increases the capacity potentially of an appraiser. So we know we have uh, a lot of noise about capacity constraints in the marketplace. So does that allow an appraiser who eliminates a lot of windshield time to be able to do more work in the same amount of time because the the, the tasks are essentially delegated and uh, resulting in a, a more efficient use of the analytical power that appraisers possess. Absolutely. In fact, I, I, I was talking to a group, a security valuation, which I have an interest in, and uh, my son Jeff is uh, running 
a, a managing a number of appraisers and, and uh, trainees. They call them site analysts that uh, are collecting the data and, uh, and, and conveying that back to the appraiser who sits at his office and does the appraisal. And, and I think people would be stunned at how much more efficient the appraiser becomes when they're performing the appraisal function, doing the analysis, and allowing others to do the less uh, technical elements of the appraisal. In fact, uh, as I was talking to these guys, they're saying, you know what, it takes six hours to do the appraisal. It just means that what we've done is the appraiser who's actually doing the analysis is spending an hour or two or two doing the analytics, and you've got other people uh, performing that those six hours or, you know, uh, of, of required time in collecting public record data, doing some of this other kind of uh, work so that uh, it doesn't really reduce the time it takes. It just means the appraiser who's doing the analytics is uh, just doing the most significant part. And uh, you've got others helping you do the other stuff. And uh, they're able to a single appraiser can get an awful lot of appraisals uh, completed or, you know, reports completed uh, when, when that kind of process takes place. Yeah. The, the, the efficient use of time. It's a, it's a cool thing to think about. My wife is a nurse and works in the operating room with the local hospital here. And some of the new orthopedic surgeons will come in and they'll run two or three operating rooms at the same time, leveraging different surgical assistants to, you know, do the opening and the closing and some of the other tasks, whereas some of the more seasoned surgeons that have been doing it for a while can can only operate one room at a time because they don't have that process. And so it's kind of a another real world um, observation I make of the, the efficiencies of um, disseminating the work amongst different uh, groups. So certainly a good and interesting topic I'm sure we'll hear more about in the, in the near future. So, well, Craig, thank you for your uh, conversation today, your input, certainly appreciate your time and your, your observations and your expertise. And, and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Thank you, Craig. Anytime. Thanks so much. Nice to see you, Sean.